One Man Army has always been the epitome of epicness, regardless of whether they are the protagonist or the antagonist. Although rare, there are enough One Man Army characters out there to make a series of videos. Therefore, my focus for this list will be only those who fought against an actual army of people. To start the list, we have Tiru, who was a devourer of flesh. He may struggle to use magic himself, but his cursed eyes allow him to absorb any form of magic. Coupled with his enhanced athletic abilities, strength and regenerative abilities, makes him one of the most powerful characters in this show. He easily takes out chunks of this army with a single strike. Trespassing on this man's property was a very bad idea. Even if you have a platoon of trained soldiers, tanks, a captain class man with a chainsaw arm, a ninja, and a bad turned good homunculus. He may be a homunculus himself, but he neither ages nor regenerates, and yet was easily able to take an entire army. He was so powerful that tanks were running away from him. He slices through bullets, shells, tanks, and enters his castle in a matter of minutes. The power difference in One Piece characters is extremely wide, and so there are many one-man army characters. There are definitely characters that are much stronger than our main protagonists here. However, there were no better example than this to show one guy versus an entire army. In fact, this entire arc was just one giant flex for the Straw Hats, and this was the topping where apparently 50,000 fishmen were taken down instantaneously. Moral of the story? Don't be the first villains after a time skip. Ainz is the strongest character in this anime so far, taking out 70,000 men with a single spell. The crazy part was that the 70,000 men killed were only sacrifices to summon his five baby goats, which went on to trample on the remainder of the army. His pride was not in destroying an army in mere seconds, but breaking his record in the number of these monsters he summoned at one time. A very short war that sent a message to both the enemies and allies, this overlord is not someone you want to wage war against. Gilgamesh, the King of Heroes, the first hero of all, challenged by the King of Conquerors, an epic battle. Ryder charges with a massive army he summons, while Gilgamesh didn't have an ounce of fear. His greatest sword has the ability to divide space and dismantle reality marbles, but he often chooses not to use it because of his pride. However, Ryder has earned his respect as he uses his strongest weapon from the very beginning. But it was too great of a power, as he wipes out Ryder's entire army with one swing of a sword. This isn't his only ability though. Most of the time he sits back and relaxes while raining down an infinite number of weapons at his enemies, making him untouchable. Gintama is a versatile anime covering a wide range of genres, but specializes in comedy and battles. The serious arcs can be very epic, and this is the final arc against his own teacher. This near-immortal being has cycled through countless personalities, one of which was a kind-hearted teacher that gave rise to our protagonists. However, the current personality is the cruelest form only desiring destruction to eventually end his own life along with the planet. 
His immortality and regenerative abilities caused much suffering during his early life, outcast and tortured constantly. But this also contributed as a form of training, centuries worth of it, becoming resilient to pain and an expert killing machine, to the point he can kill while blinded. <laughs> The Black Swordsman cannot be stopped even against an army of 100. At first, it may seem like he is at a disadvantage, but as he takes down enemies one by one, you start to question who is really at a disadvantage here. Not only is he swinging around a ridiculously heavy sword, he is wearing a very durable cape capable of blocking even arrows. Whenever the cape isn't doing its job properly, he simply catches the arrow with his bare hand and crushes it. It's hard to believe he managed all this while being just 18 years old, but you kind of have to, because later on, he battles far greater foes. Vampires are already powerful creatures, but Alucard is on a different level. He is the most powerful vampire in existence. He is mostly an amiable and amusing character, however this particular scene is a reminder to us all that he is an expression of pure evil. We have seen so many modern day versions of Dracula, but nothing lives up to the name as much as in Helsing. The true king of the night, terrifying and brutal. When his restraints are released and his true form is revealed, only terror awaits for those witnessing the moment. The sheer number of souls he has devoured is incredible. He easily massacres an entire army, leaving only a pool of blood. The world sure is lucky Integra never felt like conquering it. One of the best fights in anime history, or more accurately, a massacre. It's no surprise they called it a war, even though the Allied forces were up against only three people. He fought so effortlessly that it was basically him trying out some techniques for fun. He initially takes out a bunch of people with just martial arts, and even manages to kill someone with a kunai, which usually can't kill people in Naruto. And when he does proceed to use his first fire technique, it was at the level of a natural disaster. Every subsequent move he performs were only grander, especially dropping two meteors back to back. He is one of the few legends that wasn't defeated by Talk No Jutsu by a blonde teenager. Let me know who your favorite one-man army was. If there is enough interest, I will make a volume two. If you enjoyed that, please leave a like to help this channel grow. And remember to subscribe for future top tens.